Okay, good evening. Uh, for our study of God's Word this evening, please turn your Bibles with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And tonight, we will be looking at verses 9 up to verse 10 of this passage. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 9 to 10. And this is what the Word of God says. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Before we look into God's word this evening, let us first come to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Father, tonight we thank you that we can look into your word to see how it shows us how we should respond during times like this. Father, tonight we pray that your spirit will guide us into all the truth. Help us to see the things you want us to see. And may the truths, Father, that we receive from your word this evening simply burn in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The COVID-19 virus that has struck the world today is revealing a lot about the Christian faith. What has it revealed so far? Tonight, let us explore two things that it has revealed so far. First, it revealed our true view of reality. It revealed our true view of reality. Think of it. How does a fish know when it lives in the water? Paano malalaman ng isda na siya'y nakatira sa tubig? The simple answer is that when his reality is disturbed. The same is true with us. We can see the true view of reality when our own reality is disturbed. For this reason, when the COVID-19 virus threat came, it revealed actually how self-absorbed we really are. Now, this would explain the worldwide shortage of toilet paper simply because man has been seeking to preserve his own comfort. This would explain also the shortage of alcohol and face masks due to panic buying and hoarding as man seeks to preserve himself at the expense of others, notwithstanding that there are those who buy these things and sell them in jacked up prices, revealing how greedy and opportunistic man is. This would explain the madness displayed by a chosen few who, in the midst of this crisis, they would launch what is called the coronavirus, licking doorknobs and stuff. It's crazy, I know. It is defying basic sanitation and hygiene. Or it would also be a defiance of the government's call for an enhanced community quarantine. And their attitude is simply this, patay kung patay. It's arrogant, it is boastful, and it goes to show the lens that man would go in order to preserve their own way of life. This explained the response of some churches to secure their finances, first of all, when everything is threatened. Some pastors even joke that in the case of those who are going to come on Sunday, uh, we have read some Facebook posts that said, uh, papayagan ka lang pumunta sa simbahan kung dala mo ang tights mo. That's a joke, he said. But brother, truths are half meant. Jokes are half meant. And what the mouth speaks, it shows the abundance of what contained is contained in your heart. This would explain why many post in Facebook their prayers for health and wealth for the nation and for the world because their false theology of prosperity is being laid out to open shame by this coronavirus. Behind all of this is the self-absorbed selfish and self-preserving responses that is the reality of many Christians today. A reality that is of health, wealth, trouble-free, hassle-free, hakuna matata, pagan Christianity. So much so, when this plague comes, our reality is disturbed and we come face to face by the very fear that we try to cover up. 
with comforts and platitudes of a reality that is pre-corona, and that is the fear of death. We're all gonna die, some people would exclaim, as it comes face to face with this global pandemic. And indeed, true enough, for what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world but lose his own soul? But why are so many Christians surprised? Have we not read that in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death is passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And you say, I know, I know, but... Paul says in our passage today, But we had the sentence of death in ourselves. Notice, it says, had, past tense. Paul lived his life under the sentence of death. This was his reality. So much so, that we read in the verse above in 2 Corinthians 1.18, if you would turn your Bibles to that, it says, For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, but we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. Paul in his ministry in Asia was troubled. He was pressed out of measure. He was pressed out of strength. They despaired even of life. Definitely, his ministry was not a walk in a park. Well, if it's a walk in a park, it's Jurassic Park. But it was Paul's norm. Paul considered that his normal situation because he had a sentence of death in himself. That is why in verse 9, verse nine you would see that he says, But as it transitioned from verse 8, which should be end seeing all of the negatives. But this troubles, this pressing out of measure and above strength, this despairing even of life is what you get when you have the sentence of death. That is the norm. But what are we dying for that we may know what we are living for? For Paul, that's easily answered. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians 1.20, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. How about us? For those who have been scared of dying, living their lives in paranoia and fear before the virus, what are you living in fear? In now, for that dying in fear doesn't make sense. For those who are hoarders, not just of alcohols and face masks, but of good works. Because there is a threat, what have you been living for before the virus that you are so scared of dying now? If any, this virus has disturbed our reality. For us to reflect whether we are dying men in a dying world, or are we, as the Apostle Paul testified in Galatians, I am crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live, the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. This virus had threatened and disturbed our reality. This would explain all our schedules being postponed or canceled, our normal lifestyle disturbed. But friends, consider this. It reveals what reality we are looking forward to. Second, it revealed where our trust lies. Whether, there are two options, our trust lies in ourselves. And I believe this is one of the greatest problems of the world today. We put too much trust in ourselves. Hindi ba ito ang... Hindi ba ito ang ang cry ng mga Pilipino ngayon, tiwala lang or something. We put too much trust in ourselves. We put too much trust in our wisdom. We put too much trust in our opinions, in our perspectives, in our way of doing things. That is why when a pastor cancels the service, there are some that would say he lacks faith. But when he keeps it open, there will be some who will say that he lacks discernment. Wala kang kalalagyan. Man always put too much trust in himself. When a pastor shakes hands, 
he is a fool. But when he doesn't, he is cold and unloving. When the government says religious gatherings are strongly discouraged, some people would cry out, persecution! And they would say, we would rather obey God rather than man. But first and foremost, the government is not threatening the faith. The problem, the issue is not faith. The issue is the virus that is threatening the lives of us all. We put too much trust in ourselves. We take preventive measures to the extreme, forgetting the weightier matters of love, compassion, and spiritual connection. We take things too lightly. Some people joke about it. Some people are so, so proud and boastful. They are portraying a false sense of arrogant and false invincibility. The result is fear. Fear because deep inside, we know a simple truth. We cannot truly trust ourselves. This reason in our passage this evening in First Corinthians chapter uh, First Second Corinthians chapter one, Apostle Paul writes, "But we had a sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead." Do we trust ourselves? Or the second option, God who raises the dead. This act of God who raises the dead is in the gospel message where we see that God is a holy God and from whom man who is a sinner has been separated from. For man to be reconciled to God, sin must be paid for. And there is only one way to pay for sin. As the scripture says, for the wages of sin is death. Do not believe in the lie that you can pay for your sins and be reconciled to God by the matter of confession or doing good works. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that. No, there's only one way. It is written also that the soul that sinneth, he shall die. There's only one way. And the problem is man cannot pay for his own sin because he has many sins and he has only one life. But this is where the good news comes in. The scripture says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus is the solution that God provided. His death for our sins, His burial and His resurrection, His finished work on the cross makes reconciliation back to God ready and available. For it is written, that God uh, that Jesus was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. God has raised Jesus from the dead, and in so doing we read, Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Notice the following things. Number one, that God delivered, past tense, in verse, uh, verse 10, from a so great a death. What greater death is there than the death of both body and soul in hell? The Lord Jesus in his time on earth had warned us not to fear those who can kill only the body. This virus can only kill the body. But a worse death is the death that kills both body and soul in hell. Out of this great condemnation, we had been delivered by God by the death of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross by believing that what He has done is sufficient for eternal salvation. God has already delivered those who believe from a death so great. What more should we fear? Also, God doth deliver, that's present tense, from so great a death. It is God that delivers us from death daily. Also, we see that God will deliver, future tense, from so great a death. So we do not live in fear. We live trusting in God who delivered us from so great a death. And we trust that the Lord delivers and will deliver us from death even in dying. So, where does our trust lie? Does it lie in our own selves? Because if that is so, 
we will utterly fail ourselves. Some people come to the point in their lives feeling that they can solve all their problems by themselves. That is not true. Many times, that's the reason why you're in that problem in the first place. But friends, this is how grace works. God did the work for us. The beautiful thing about faith and the faith that we have, it's not our faith that works. But if you would read your Bible carefully, it says, we are saved by the faith of Jesus Christ. It is Christ's faith, not ours. It is Christ's work, not ours. It is Christ's finished work, not our finished work. Friends, in this time of crisis, may it be seen what we truly are living for and where our trust truly lies. Tonight, my, friend, I, my friends, I pray that you will consider this carefully, knowing that we have the sentence of death in ourselves, that we may not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. Father, we thank you for your word today. I pray that you would settle our hearts, focus our mind in believing you who had delivered us from so great a death, will deliver and doth deliver us even today. Father, we pray that the truths that we have heard from your word today would simply show a heart that will show us what we're truly living for and show us where our trust truly lies. Father, I pray that the truths that we have received from your word this evening would simply burn in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So thank you very much for listening. The Lord bless you. I need to tell you.